It was the midnight premiere of the movie Batman. It was a sold out crowd. Once again today, Americans absorbed the news of a mass shooting. 70 casualties, 12 confirmed dead. Uh, they said that the shooter was at the front of the theater. Caught on cell phones. All new details from shell shock survivors. This is really compelling audio. And this is the ticket stub, the Dark Knight show. I think it's just this horrible, morbid curiosity. It's like the, you know, the train wreck or the car accident where everybody has to slow down and like look at it. How did he get out and she did not? Separated by 13 years and 17 miles. The midnight shooting last night and that horrific school shooting at Columbine. I think I was on my way into work and heard about it and immediately <laughs> turned on um, music because I can't listen to things like that without not being okay. I remember the lights going up, and I was one of the last people to exit the theater. And I ran out the front doors. The entire theater was swarmed with police cars. We all ran into the teacher's office. We had no idea what was going on. We just know that we kept hearing gunshots. The shooting itself felt like it was going on for hours. And I just wanted it to stop. Around 60 students in that room. 11 of us were coworkers, six of them were critically injured and had life-threatening injuries. And out of the six, we did lose a friend as well. We talked about the things that we would never be able to do because we would die in the room. Um, we climbed up into the ceiling and we all wrote our names up on the wall. I believe that every human being is either in a state of overcoming or has overcome. I'm not going to go to, like, the pages of the shooters mm -hmm. or anything. Okay. Um, I, I don't remember the last time I've looked at this. <laughs> I've known you forever, and I still think you're cool. Just kidding. Jerk. I mean, it's only referenced like one, once, maybe twice in here. Maybe we're just in denial and trying to get back to normal. Um, maybe it's that point in time where um, we don't want to think about it. After the Aurora Theater shooting, we really wanted to help people who just lived right down the street from us. It's not far. This one says, I hope you have good things to remember from Columbine. We desperately wanted to share and help and try to offer up our experiences as best we could. Smile and be happy. And then we kind of all got together and we had a microphone because there were a lot of people and every person that picked up the mic and tried to share their story just started sobbing. And this was 13 years uh, after our shooting. Um, there's me. A lot of them were in serious need of help. I attended University of Colorado Denver for a full year, and then um, the shooting happened. It's not something that a lot of people experience, thankfully. But I feel like the ones that do, there's a huge opportunity there to connect. So I am going um, to speak on a panel at a mental health symposium with a couple people from the Rebels Project. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, a little bit background on the Rebels Project. Um, it was formed by myself and another Columbine survivor uh, right after the Aurora Theater shooting. Members of our community have been through some kind of mass trauma. Um, one of our biggest barriers is trying to convince people that it is okay to be traumatized. It impacts everybody. It just impacts everybody in different ways. I want to advocate for other survivors. I don't want them to feel like I felt for so long. It's really interesting because when, when an event like this happens, it's, it's the hot topic in the media and everybody hears about it and everybody just rushes in to get the story. And by the time the, the first anniversary comes around, 
everybody kind of forgets, and that's when we need the most help. I don't know of anything that's for survivors of mass tragedy except for us. There is, there's sadly a need for it. Everybody wants to help. Everybody just like flocks to the area, not only like physically, but phone calls are crazy. The media is everywhere. It's so, just like uh, chaos. Mass trauma is a little bit different because it's uh, very, it's like grieving in a fishbowl. You know, she's got the mic in my face and was like, so how does it feel to be a mass shooting survivor? How do you answer that question? A limousine came to our house and picked us up. This had happened frequently in the days after Columbine and just randomly took us to hotels for interviews. And, and the producer would say, so, <clears throat> Could you cry? And at one point, one of them put Visine on my sister's face to make it look like she was crying. When I finally did seek help, I didn't actually seek help for the trauma that I had experienced. I just thought I was losing my mind. There was years that I wish I'd been shot. There was years I wish I could point and say, look, there's my pain. There's my injury, that's why it hurts. I was suicidal at some point. Just joining the Rebels Project and being able to speak freely and talk to people who just got it um, has been amazing. It's probably saved my life. Advice that people hear a lot and throw out a lot is don't worry, this doesn't define you. It seems like it's kind of a motto of strength, you know, like, I will move on, I will move past this, I will be able to overcome this. But what I've learned in the past, probably just five years since the Rebels Project, is that there's so much about me that is probably because of the shootings that is good. So you want this complete, evidence and all. Are we good? Go team. I like the person that I am today. I'm proud of the person that I am today. Everyone wants to, you know, like be someone in life, so. I'm proud of the things that I've overcome. I never, never thought I'd go back to school. That's what we're kind of wondering about. People are really asking those kinds of questions. Um, and again, don't, being in like auditorium type environment, I wasn't sure if I could go back. I have healed a lot. The strength of human beings is never to be underestimated. People who have experienced trauma at a certain level, they have touched this piece of our humanity that not everybody is able to touch. And once you touch that, it will always be a part of you.